Hey Hannah Mouse One here. Wow, can you believe that it's been two whole years since I started my series of devlogs on a farmer's life? This time last year I did a recap of everything that I achieved in year one and since then I've completed three major updates that have added so many new items and systems that were definitely overdue for another revisit. If you want to see what I did in year one in more depth you might want to watch that previous retrospective first. I'll link it in the iCard but in brief the first year saw me work up to the first major release of the game covering in terms of major systems, crops, research, mining and crafting and I'd just begun to work towards the animals update, creating the barn and the NPC to run it. The first thing that I added in the second year of development was animals. I added three types of animals, chickens, cows and pigs, creating art for each of these as a baby and for once they're grown up. I set it up so that you can feed the animals with the crops that you grow on your farm and gave the chicken the ability to drop eggs and the cows the ability to drop milk. I added in a bucket tool that you purchase from the barn to collect the milk and added in a cleaver with which you can store to the animals to collect chicken, beef and pork. I added research options to make animals produce more of their respective drops. Then I added in two new workspaces, the refinery and the butcher block, as well as a lot of items that you craft at them. The refinery is a bit of a catch-all workspace for crafting a lot of different items from flour to cheese to pasta. The butcher block specialises in breaking meat down into other meat related products like sausages or burgers or bacon. In this point I also amended how crafting works so that some recipes take two different ingredients and so that some produce more than one product. I added all the animal products to the completion log and made it so that these products can be requested once the barn is built. To wrap up the animals update, I went through and overhauled the music for the game, creating a new track for pretty much every area, so instead of hearing the main farm theme over and over, the music fits wherever you are, and I had to create a system to make sure that the right track was playing at any given time, and with that I released the animal update for you all to play. The next update I worked towards was the fisherman's update. I created a new building that you can construct from the hardware store, the fisherman's hut, and I made a new NPC to run it, Felix. I I created the art for different types of bait and fish that I wanted to add. In terms of bait, there are insects that you find when performing routine tasks such as cutting trees or mining rocks, baits refined from said insects making them more powerful, and then much stronger baits that you can purchase from the fishing hut shop. I made art for the pier with three fishing nets, and I also made art for a page that opens when you click one of these nets, displaying how much bait and fish are in the net. I made it so that you can actually put bait into the net and so that you can collect the fish once caught. The way that fishing works is that every few frames, assuming that there's bait in the net, the net uses a piece of bait, then rolls the die so to speak to see if you caught a fish. I also added the fish to the completion log and added in an achievement for once you catch every type of fish. I also added Felix to the request board and made it so that once the fisherman's hut is built, NPCs can request fish at the board, with these being items of Felix's preference. I completely overhauled the research lab because in playtesting I felt like it was lacking and not that useful. I made separate pages based on what the upgrade upgrades, so farming, mining, animals, fishing, yada yada yada. I also added in a lot of new upgrades, most of which reduced how long various gameplay loops take to complete. So how long crops take to grow for instance, or how much of a reward you repeat from the completion of each loop, so how many crops are in a yield. I also made it much more modular so I could easily add in more upgrades whenever I need to. And then I added in fertilizer, there are two types of fertilizer, compost and manure. For compost I added in a new workspace, the compost heap. From here you can craft compost from a new item I added, plant matter and you collect plant matter from time to time whenever you harvest crops. The compost makes crops grown in it grow much faster. For manure, I created a new tool for the barn, a shovel, and this can be used to gather animal droppings that appear in the barn when there are animals there to um, produce it. And crops grown in manure have higher yields than those grown without. And with that, I released the fisherman's update for you all to play. I then started working on the individuality update, adding in 10 new crops to the game. Nine of these are called tier 2 crops that you unlock in the research lab and the elusive tenth crop, cotton, can be bought right from the beginning of the game. I had to create art for each growth stage as well as inventory icons for every crop and its seed. I also had to make the goods that you can refine from each of these new crops such as pickles for the veg and jam and wine for the watermelon and I had to add these to the completion log. Next I overhauled the mining in the game. I made it so that crystals could spawn in the quarry once the appropriate research is unlocked and because the act of mining felt a bit laborious I spiced things up a bit by adding in bombs. I made it so that you can buy bombs and sell crystals in the blacksmith store and once bought you can place bombs in the quarry to damage the surrounding tiles. I then completely redid how the player in the game is rendered so that elements such as body, clothing, hair and eyes are all drawn in separately. I made it so that the colour of the tools that the player is seen using is dependent on what level you've upgraded that tool to. I made it so that if you're in the quarry with a bomb equipped the player visibly holds the bomb above their head. I made it so that players can render an extra feature such as glasses or facial hair. I set up a character customization menu that opens when you first 
first start the game and from here you can select the character's hairstyle and colour, eye and skin colour and any extras that you want them to have. I then added in a new workspace, the spinning wheel, and made it so that you can turn raw cotton, which is produced by the cotton plant, into refined cotton. I added in another upgrade tier to the barn, which unlocks the animal sheep, and made it so that sheep produce raw wool, which you collect with a new tool, shears. I also made it that cows drop leather and sheep drop mutton when killed. I made it so that in the spinning wheel you can craft refined wool from raw wool, denim from refined cotton, dyes from crystals from the quarry, and a variety of clothing items from the different fabrics. I had to create art for every position that the player can be in for every item of clothing that you can craft. I created a wardrobe menu that allows you to equip the clothing and dyes assuming that you have them in your inventory. And at this point I also had to switch from the native scratch site to using Turbo Warp, which is basically just scratch with mods, because my project exceeded scratch's maximum file size. The wardrobe menu can be opened from a new location, the farmhouse. This is an area that I added for the player to customise and make their own, so I had to make a lot of different wallpapers, floors and furniture. And one of these furniture items is the wardrobe. This allows you to open the dress up page that I just mentioned. I added two new shops that you can build from the hardware store, the clove shop and the furniture shop, and each of these required a new NPC. For the clove shop this is Santi, and for the furniture shop this is Sasha. I set it up so that you could sell any craftable clothing items in the clove store, and added in some more unique outfits such as military gear and kimonos that you can buy, which of course required a lot more art to make it so that the player can actually wear them. For the furniture store I made it so that there are three shop tabs, one where you can buy the different walls, one for the floors and one for the furniture, and set it up so that you can actually place and move the furniture in the farmhouse. I needed to make it so you can select placed furniture items and, once selected, so that you can choose to deselect them, store them, move them or rotate them if they're rotatable. Some furniture also has special functions which needed their own options such as the wardrobe which has the dress up tab and the gramophone which allows you to change the song played in areas such as the farm. With that done I added in one last little extra feature to this update, bees. I added in a new workspace, the beehive, that once placed on the farm generates honey over time and speeds up the growth of neighbouring crops. You can upgrade this in the research lab to produce honey more frequently, to produce more honey on each cycle and to increase its effect on surrounding crops. And I spent some time rebalancing the game and improving the pacing, especially in the early game, before releasing the individuality update for you to play. And that brings us to today. It's kind of crazy how bare bones this game felt a year ago without animals or fishing or any of that progression and it's even crazier to think where this game might go in the future. And I want to spend a moment to talk about the future directory of this game. I have one more major gameplay update that I want to add before I move on to the story elements of the game and when I do I have to make a decision about whether or not I'm going to monetize this project. When I was using Scratch's native site the discussion in that regard was basically answered, all Scratch projects are free by nature, but now that I'm sharing this project on itch.io rather than Scratch proper I could potentially charge a small fee, probably not more than £5 if that. On one hand I like that anyone can take the time to play my game without it being hidden behind a paywall and I'm honestly super sceptical that anyone would actually want to play my game if it is behind a paywall, especially when it's so similar and yet really can't hold a candle to games such as Stardew Valley. On the other hand, two years is a really long time to spend on something that has yielded me absolutely zero monetary reward and I do believe that time has value and there's no shame in billing for your time. I do believe that there are enough hours of content to warrant a small fee and it would also give me more leeway to spend time and effort on this project which could result in more frequent updates and videos for you all to enjoy. I'm really torn on this so I'd love to hear your opinions and apart from that thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed this video. Like and subscribe if you did and let me know this one to see more of. Join the discord link down below and I'll see you next week with another video. Here's to another year of game dev. Bye!